Romans kind of invented the tea room. Previous to that, you know, tea was a very expensive commodity and only the rich would have had tea. You know, they would have, no doubt, people might have seen on Antiques Roadshow the tea caddy with a, a lock on it because it was such an expensive thing to buy. Um, but it got cheaper in the uh, uh, Victorian era. Uh, you know, links in and out of England and Britain were easier with the trains and so tea became cheaper and easier for normal folk to buy. And the, therefore the tea room then started, it was sprung out, you know, the first tea room started in the Victorian era. We uh, were looking for a business to buy and we saw this property on the market. Didn't know there was a tea room, but just loved the building. So when we came over to have a look at it and it was a tea room, we just thought it was absolutely perfect and we uh, decided then to buy it. We either wanted, uh, we wanted to stay in hotel and catering and this one was on the market, we live down the road, mm -hmm. and uh, we're in the right position um, at the right time. And as soon as we saw it, you saw the potential uh, for it to uh, become a, quite a good business. This uh, tea room's opened um, in the summer of 1990, which was when my family and I moved to the area, and uh, I've been coming here ever since. That was closed for about six months, but other than that, I, I've been coming here ever since. This building date is, is pre-Victorian. I mean, I think originally it's 16th century, actually. But I mean, it's, it's presented as a Victorian tea yeah. rooms now, but the, the building actually is much older. Mm. I live by myself, I mean, I just, and therefore I take advantage of coming down here whenever I want to. So I do all the things that you do at home, yeah. uh, as, as all those that are often sitting in the yes. corner there yeah. and, uh, and getting to know, I've got to know, uh, yeah. got to know an awful lot of people and you've done the same here. Very much so. Because Very it's much welcoming so. him as well. And that's, I think that's important too. Yeah, everything about this place uh, comes together to, to make a, a, a wonderful tea rooms, in my opinion. The quality of the, the food and the, and the tea and the coffee they serve, and many other things that they serve, uh, the music, the decor, um, the, the, the clothes the waitresses wear. Uh, it, 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 for me, it makes a whole and it is irresistible. I got introduced from t to the tea room culture by my wife who saw this place on the market and decided that we had to have it, um, even though it was in need of a great deal of repair. We've tried to be as fairly fa as faithful as we can to a building of its age, it's a listed building, um, it built in 1635 and so we've tried to sort of keep, keep it as faithful as we can, well, obviously um, with the electrics and stuff that modern society, but hiding as much, much as the, of, of the modern contemporary stuff and, and bringing out its natural old beauty and that, you know, that it deserves. Everything that we do, we, we, we try and make sure that we make all our own scones and tea cakes and, and our own sponges and gattos and stuff and all of the food that we do provide is cooked fresh on the day, um, soups etc and I think people are coming for that and also the ambience of the place and, and a friendly welcome. Uh, well me and my ex-wife, my uh, ex-wife and I bought the building 12 years ago and we, was, we originally was going to call our film, because originally the, the, the company was started as a film, period film production company and we were going to call it Tea for Two for some reason, and then we uh, was looking for a premises, and we walked by on Shoreditch High Street and saw this building for sale, which has a clock on the front, and looked at each other and straight away just thought, oh, time for tea. Uh, but it's just, the colour the color scheme is all very 1930s, 40s. It's just a much slower sort of pace of life. I think, you know, British society has had to sp speed up. Everything is sort of takeaways and quick food and eating on the go. And I think, you know, in, in an earlier time, people used to sit down and contemplate things and talk to each other, and it was much nicer. So, you know, that's what we're trying to do here. As times were very hard. People weren't as spoilt as they are today. They didn't have as much choice, or life wasn't as simple and easy uh, as then. So I think, in a way, people had sort of, sort of slightly, even though it was more a harder lifestyle, it was also more respect. They, they enjoyed their lives more, and it was... Uh, I don't know really, it's, it's also quite a good time to remember. If anything, the people I like the best are the old, sort of older people in the, the old fashioned, the old community, 
because when they come in, it sort of suits it much more when, when you get a couple of old ladies uh, come in you know, and they have their fag outside and they come in for a tea. They're, they're, they're the ones that I really love seeing in here and I love their stories as well. I love talking to the, the older community around here. We get a very eclectic mix of people actually. We get young people, very old people, artists, you know, all sorts of strange people. But, you know, they, they, they just like, like the space, you know, because it's, you know, I think the, the thing they love about it is that it's uh, escapism from the madness outside in Shoreditch High Street. Personal tea habits. I'm a lover of what I would call builder's tea, very strong English breakfast tea. Um, but the milk has to go in first. The milk has to go in first. I don't put milk first because, um, you know, that'll make the sort of tea go cold straight away and you want to know the, the, the strength. Well, there's, there's different things you can do when you're making a cup of tea. You can either put the milk in first or you can put the milk in later. Actually. Warm the pot first of all with boiling water. Always tea leaves, never use tea bags. No, I, th I think milk first because that's the way I was taught and brought up and I was also told once upon a time that if you put the milk in after it scolds the milk. Now I don't know whether there's any truth in that or not, I don't know. Hot, wet and refreshing, I don't really complain too much but I can't drink, I can't use tea bags. I can't, um, once, once you start using tea leaves it's very hard to go back to the taste of a tea bag. The decision to open a tea room was just kind of uh, <coughs> an extension of my life really. I was living in Newquay and uh, there wasn't really a place for my circle of friends and I to go to. So um, I kind of had the idea but kept it as a secret, didn't tell anyone and just uh, waited until the correct property came up. And uh, this place came up, it, it was... Um, a greasy spoon back in the day and uh, um, when I came in to see it it just felt really good it had such a homely feel about it and uh, I knew that was the place and uh, we've been here ever since. I, I do find I've, I look for places that that kind of fit me if you will my personality and wherever you go there's, there's lots that stick in my mind because they are trying to do something different essentially which is you know it's nice and um, th there is so th there are such you know so many big brands that you, you just get the same old thing same interior same sort of people same um, sort of service etc um, and it's nice to find those people that are doing it for the, for the same reasons as us and for the right reasons I guess which is nice. We're two individuals that are just doing something that we love and I think that's reflected in the food and uh, our attention to detail and our regulars l probably feel that they are friends as well as customers yeah. and uh, that's where the, the social side of it uh, sort of crosses over with the business side. I guess uh, that you're allowed to be yourself. Mm. I could come to work every day and pick my own music depending on what mood I'm in, what the weather's doing. I could dress in my own clothes. People I work with are people that you choose to work with. Mm. Uh, it makes the day fun. And it's all about having that sort of balance of work and free time and, and having a nice quality of life, really. We decided to open our own tea room because uh, over here, even though we're a nation of tea drinkers, um, the American coffee culture had taken over and we thought there was nobody really presenting tea in a modern, interesting way. So we thought if we could bring uh, good quality loose leaf tea over here and present it in a fun and novel way, then it could have the same kind of excitement as um, a coffee bar, but without the uh, Americanization. I guess it's partly, partly because we offer something different. I think especially for the local area, because we're in a, a quite a... Uh, affluent area, it's a lot of people that have moved from London to have their families and I think it's quite nice for them to have quite a modern a, a sort of place that they maybe would find in London if they'd stayed there. What we tried to do was take what the coffee chains did, did well which was create an environment that suited the product and uh, made a dedicated uh, modern tea shop. But I'd say it's been slow to take off. Um, and we looked to west coast of America to see a general trend and that has been widely taken on their independent tea shops. Um, so I think, I think people are ready for a change. 
used to go to a lot of Northern Soul nights in the 90s and play at nights like Manny Mission. This is all in Manchester, but basically they went on a lot later than most club nights, so you'd be up until six, seven, eight, nine in the morning. And occasionally these venues would let you have a brew at say six o'clock in the morning. And so it was that little revelation of having a hot drink in a, in a club environment that led me to set up my own tea shop in my own club, which um, is a night called Keep It Unreal, which started in Manchester in uh, the summer of 1999. But that, that carried on for a few years, then we started taking my night on tour around the UK from about 2002 onwards and we thought well if we're doing what I do in Manchester around the country basically taking the the idea of the residency with me DJing all night um, doing visuals and that kind of thing making sure the sounds really good taking all my DJ equipment it's like I've got to bring the tea shop as well so we used to roll around the country on the tour bus go to Birmingham London Southampton Oxford Reading Glasgow Bangor wherever and we'd set up a tea shop in the corner and basically do what I did in Manchester but around the country. I think the best bit about having a tea shop is I think creating an environment where people can come and relax and enjoy themselves. I mean to me that aspect of it is very similar to putting on events and I love putting on club nights because you're getting a, a good mix of people together and you're providing like a special environment for them to enjoy themselves and socialise and have an evening out. I think for me it's a, it's a similar buzz to what I get from DJing is that you're creating a, a, a relaxing, sociable environment that people enjoy and, and, and talk about. Um, I think like my favourite part about having my own tea room is partly I love working for myself anyway, but um, I really enjoy watching the difference between people that drink tea and people that drink coffee because obviously we sell both in our cafe. And I, I think it's really... Um, made me realise how important tea, tea's role is in our society, which is very hectic and fast. And I love watching people come in and what happens to them physically as they receive their tea and slump and wait for it to brew and th their whole body just relaxes. And I think, um, to me, that's what tea is all about. It just puts you in that frame of mind where you really can change your life like you're just like right I'm ready to take on anything today and I think we kind of really need that because we've really lost anything that grounds us and um, for me tea, having a place where I see the physic it physically happening to people as they come in it's like a really great really great thing. Tea is a very important part of being in the recording studio um, just as fuel I think every hour or so you, you, you take a break and have a cup of tea so I think it's, it's a natural time out for a lot of people in Britain, like a lot of people might go out for fag breaks but you know far more people stop every hour or two and you know just stop for five minutes and have a cup of tea. For me personally the, the idea of having a cup of tea in the afternoon is a way of relaxing and I don't really um, agree with drinking tea from a takeaway cup unless of course it is an emergency or you're driving someone you're very desperate. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, the whole idea of a cup of tea is the process of making it, putting the tea leaves, the hot water in, china cup, you know, and sitting down with friends really and conversing and talking about rubbish like the weather, things like that. Yeah, I think there is a, a, a groundswell uh, of tea rooms cropping up now, more people using tea rooms. Than it could be a number of reasons, and I think one of them is health. I think people realise that there's much more uh, more health benefits with drinking tea than there is to, to drinking coffee. So. There's a lot of customers who are a little bit tired of the same old, same old, could be in any coffee shop um, serving ridiculously large cups of coffee and very much ignoring the culture of tea. When you're going to have like a Starbucks or something like that, it's just kind of uh, um, go in, have a quick coffee, dash dash off, and you know might do your shopping. Whereas um, I think people, when they want to come and have an afternoon tea, that's the actual thing they're going to be doing for the afternoon. They're not going to be doing any shopping. That's a, you know um, a social event sort of thing. Yeah, well, when I was very young, things like Lions uh, Tea Houses still existed. You know, I remember them when I was very tiny and there were still like old fashioned cafes and things you could go and sit, sit in. But, you know, those places hardly exist anymore. Everything's sort of Starbucks culture. It does tend to overshadow um, the smaller producer. But then again, I think people do realise that in a 
or some people do realize that in a small place you get you get a personal service in a place like this and and other tea houses and things and which which you don't get in 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 the um in the larger establishments that are sort of throughout the country and in some cases throughout the world. I think the majority of people's like first domestic chore is to make a cup of tea, isn't it? It's something that you're taught at a very young age and it's sort of fundamental. It's what you do in the kitchen essentially and, and I, I don't think that, yeah, as you say, it'll never die because we're just, it's just so ingrained really. It's kind of the backbone of, of, of Britain. It has been forgotten, the variety and the usefulness that tea can bring to, life, to people's health and lives and enjoyment of their life. And I think it's, I think it's coming back. Um, I think it's coming back as people ready for something different and um, start to become aware of what they're missing out on. The coffee franchises probably helped the tea because they became so big that people kind of wonder what happened to the tea. And over the last probably three, four, five years, tea became stronger, and the culture or the quality of tea became better. So people opening up away from the tea bag towards nice loose tea, green teas, they discover the big varieties of tea. So I think um, it's a positive future for tea. Places like Attic in Bristol, uh, you know, they, they will make tea for you in the traditional Asian style where there's multiple infusions of the same leaf and it's a much more sensory experience where there's, you're not just tasting the tea, you're smelling it, you're, you're watching the leaves unfurl. So that's how I see the future. It's almost going backwards really to how people drank tea and have been drinking tea in Asia for thousands of years. People like the tradition but also like coming to tea houses at mine flip it a bit and maybe present it slightly differently or be a bit cooler or more modern or trendy but uh, whichever way you present tea it's a very ancient um, you know it's, it's a very ancient drink and and something which no matter how it's presented is, is always comforting and um, you know it is a, a very welcome addition to, to your day so yeah I have, a, I have a feeling tea is on the rise again. I think afternoon teas have become more popular and um, I think people like Sainsbury's will have an afternoon tea offer uh, all the national magazine or national newspapers and magazines will quite often have a, an afternoon tea uh, feature. So having your afternoon tea on a traditional cake stand with your finger sandwiches and your selection of cakes, uh, especially if you want to treat uh, somebody, oh, yeah. is now coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, a birthday as, uh, treat, so, you know, to come and have something like that is uh, something very nice to do. I don't think it will ever go out of fashion. I don't think there's any threat to it, not at all. Coffee's mm. certainly kind of overshadowing tea I think but it, I think people will always fall back to tea I think I think we'll see a, a larger proportion of sort of chain coffee houses if you will that where tea is it, it'll be on the menu but it won't be such a focus and actually I think with with places like this and, and those places those sort of cafes and tea rooms that do stick in your mind because they're individual and because they uh, they're just doing the right things essentially they'll They'll, they'll prosper, I hope. Mm. I think the small independent tea rooms have become more popular again. It's a revival of the tea room. Um, and I think really the shift has, has increased our business. It's, it's actually become an affordable treat with a little more dainty culture attached to it than just going in for a quick cup of coffee. It's become more of an indulgent treat. It's a, it's a not, totally natural product. You know, it's a gift from the earth and it's... Um, it does amazing things for your body and I mean, it has a place in religious um, ceremonies and spiritual traditions are very much interwoven with, with tea, a Japanese tea ceremony and it does affect your, your consciousness and your um, well-being so um, I think it's going to come back in a good way. So for me tea is all about balance and I think a perfect cup of tea is one that gives you exactly what you wanted it to. So if you have a cup of tea to calm you down, and it does, then to me that's a perfect cup of tea. And if you have a cup of tea that you really need to energise you because you're tired and it has that effect, that, that, to me that is what tea is. It, it, it is an adaptogen, it balances who, what you need from it. And that's what makes a perfect cup of tea, if it actually does give you the thing you wanted it to. <laughs> 
generally people don't drink tea um, because maybe they had a bad experience of tea as a, a child, maybe their parents made rubbish tea or just basically tasted a bad example. So if you don't drink tea, please do try because you know it is really good, I promise you. <laughs> No, I'll never get bored of tea. <laughs> My enthusiasm for tea will never wane, I hope. Um, no, I think it's, uh, it's like alcohol, really. You can, never get, uh, you can never get enough of it. A bit like saying you might get bored of life, isn't it, really? <laughs> no, I, no, I love tea. I enjoy a cup of coffee. I enjoy a good coffee. But I, I, predominantly, I think I'm a tea drinker.